Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We'll look at a few different ways you can rig splines in Cinema 4D. This video was brought to you by Skillshare, where you can get access to over 25,000 full courses on a huge range of subjects. The classes are project-based and teachers take you through all the steps in creating each project and when you're done, you can share your work with teachers and the student community for feedback and support. We've actually got three CG Shortcuts courses on there now, with new courses being released regularly, covering a bunch of stuff we don't usually go into on YouTube. So if you want to test out Skillshare, there's a link below for a free two-month trial that will give you access to the entire catalogue of courses, including the courses from CG Shortcuts so you can see if it's right for you. Now let's get back to the tutorial. So a few people have been asking for rigging tutorials. So I thought we'd start nice and slowly and see how to rig splines. We'll cover two different setups, the first of which will be kind of a corrugated hose sort of look. So to make that, we'll come up here and bring in a circle. And we want this guy pointing upward. So let's change the plane to XZ. It's also quite big at the moment, so let's bring that guy down to five centimeters and we'll zoom in a bit. So this is going to be the indented parts of our corrugated hose. So with this selected, we'll hold control and drag up another one to create a copy. And we want it to be a bit smaller than this guy. So we'll bring the radius down to four centimeters. Now we just want to get these two and duplicate them upward. So we'll bring in a MoGraph cloner and we'll put those guys in there. And if we have a look here, they've been cloned pretty far from each other. So in our cloner, the mode is set to linear, which is cool. Now this is the direction we're looking at, the Y direction. At the moment it's 50 centimeters, which is why they're so far apart. Let's make that two centimeters. And that's looking a bit closer. Now we want a whole bunch more of these. So let's bring the count up and we can bring in as many as we like. And actually, our mode is set to per step at the moment, which is giving us two centimeters between each of our clones. So if we go and set this to endpoint instead, that'll let us set this exactly how long we want it to be. So I'm thinking two meters long. So I'll put 200 centimeters in here. And now we've got a piece of hose that's exactly two meters long. And now to fully form the hose, all we need to do is link these guys up and we'll do that with a loft. So we'll come up here and grab this guy. With our cloner selected, if we hold Alt, it should automatically apply itself, like so. Now that's starting to look a bit more hose-like, but I think these sections are a bit too far apart. So we'll go back to our cloner and we'll bring that count way up to about 100. And I'm liking that. However, if we zoom in, we can't see into the tips and that's because we've got some caps on there. So back in our loft, we'll go to the caps tab and just switch the start and the end to none. And now we can see in there. But you might notice there's no thickness to this. If you do want a bit of thickness, all we need to do is come up to simulate and bring in a cloth surface. And again, we can automatically apply this if we hold Alt when we bring it in. And that's been applied to the loft. Not much has changed just yet. So we'll take a look at our cloth settings down here. We won't bother adding any subdivision, but we'll come down here and give it a bit of thickness. Let's try one centimeter. And that might be a tad too thick. Maybe 0.5 will be right for us. That looks fine. So now that we've finally got our hose, it's time to do some rigging. We want to be able to control this with some nice handles or nulls. So to set this up, we'll switch views. You can do that by hitting the middle mouse button. We'll go down here into the front view. Then if we zoom in, here's our two meter long hose. And we're going to rig this up with the help of a spline. So let's hide our setup for now and we'll come over here and grab the pen tool. And now we want to draw a spline with three points, which will represent the controllers of our rig. So to make our life easy when we're drawing this, we'll turn on snapping. Then we'll go back in there and turn on work plane snapping. And finally, we also want grid point snap. And so now when we go to draw this, our cursor is snapping to these grid points. So we'll put one here, one in the middle, and one at the top. And you can draw as many of these as you like, depending on the amount of control as you want. But we'll keep it simple and just do three for this demonstration. We can probably disable our snapping now. So we'll just click back on this guy and we'll switch back to object mode. And we'll middle mouse button click here 
and go back to our perspective view. And here's our new spline. If we switch to point mode, you can see those three points in here. And now we'll grab our spline and go up to tags. Then we'll come down to character tags and we'll bring in an IK spline. And this will allow us to set up IK controls to drive our hose and all of this stuff up here. So the first thing our IK spline wants is a spline. We just so happen to have one of those. Let's drag that into here. Then we'll scooch over to the handles tab. And this is a cool little tool to help you set this up nice and quickly. All we need to do is add the amount of handles we want. In our spline, we have three points. So let's add three handles. So we'll just click add three times. And now we want to create a controller or a null at each one of these points. So again, we just need to hit create three times. And as we do that, you can see we've got nulls appearing in the object slot here. And here's our three nulls. If we grab that guy and switch over to the move tool, we can move those around. However, our spline is not coming along with that control point just yet. We'll undo that. There's one more step to make before that works. We'll go back to our tag. We need to tell it which of the points is the end of our IK chain. And we'll use this end, which is the null zero. So we'll drag that guy into here. And now when we move this, it's coming along with it. And we've successfully rigged up our IK chain. But we probably want our spline to be a bit smoother than this. So we'll undo the position of that. And back in our spline, we can see the type is set to Bezier and intermediate points are set to adaptive. So let's have a look at our options. I find Akima and B spline to be the best for smoothing things out. So let's try Akima. And while we're at it, we'll switch the intermediate points to subdivided. And now if we grab this null and move him over here, you can see we're getting this nice curve. And we can take a quick look at what the B spline would give us. If we switch that over, it's just a different way of interpolating this curve. So use whichever one you like. So the next step is to attach all of this stuff to our spline. So with our cloner selected, we're going to use an effector. So we'll come up to MoGraph, Effector, and we'll grab the spline effector. And we can check if that's been applied by grabbing our cloner and going to the effectors tab. And there it is there. We can access its controls by just double clicking on that. Or we can just click on this one up here. And now we need to tell this spline effector which spline to use. So we'll grab the same spline and pop him into here. That hopefully has done the trick. So let's switch this stuff back on again so we can see it. And we're almost there. It's looking a bit squashed, but we can fix that easy enough. If we go over to parameter here, all we need to do is rotate this around so our circles are going the right way. Not that one. This one's looking more promising. I think 90 degrees in this column should work for us. And now I think our rig is complete. If we grab one of these controller nulls and move it around, that IK effect is working nicely for us. We'll grab the other end and we're getting some nice squashing and stretching effects here. Let's try moving that middle one around. There we go, it's looking pretty realistic. And we can go back to our spline and change the interpolation. Let's try Akima. And you can see what that looks like. Okay, that's one way of setting this up. Let's have a look at another option. Okay, for this version, we'll do a different kind of spline. This time we'll do a spiral. So we'll come up here and grab a helix and we wanna change the angle of this so it's pointing up. We'll switch the plane to XZ and I think it's looking a bit too big there. So let's bring the radius down to five centimeters and we want the end radius to match. So five centimeters as well. And it's also twisting a bit too high there. So we'll bring that down. We'll make the height two centimeters. And if we zoom in, you can see we've just got the one section here where the start and the end of the helix are lining up, but we want just one loop here rather than the two we've got. So we'll change the end angle to 360 degrees. So from the top, it should look like a circle. And now we've got a single piece that we can clone and it should all connect up nicely. So let's do exactly that. We'll make sure our helix is selected and we'll come up to MoGraph and we'll grab a cloner. And just like before, if we hold Alt when we click, it should automatically apply itself. And it looks like if we zoom out a bit here, those pieces are a bit too far apart. You can see we've got 50 centimeters in the Y direction here. But if we go back to our helix, our height is two centimeters. So back in our cloner, let's make that two centimeters. And now they touch perfectly. So if we bring up the count, it'll look like one big spiral. 
And if we put in 100 of these at 2 centimeters apart, it'll be 2 meters long just like our last example. So now if we zoom in, we've just got a spline here. We want to give this a bit of thickness. So with our cloner selected, we'll come up here and we'll bring in a sweep. And we'll hold Alt so it's automatically applied again. And now we need something to sweep along this spline. So we'll take a look up here and you can use any shape you like in here. A circle or a star might be interesting, but I'm just going to go with the good old fashioned rectangle. And that guy's come in huge as usual. So let's resize that. I think I'll just make it two centimeters wide and one centimeter high. And now if we press S on the keyboard, we can frame that up. And there's our little rectangle there. I think it should be fine wrapped around that. If you want to get fancy, you could add some rounding to that. We might as well. we'll tick that on. And now we'll have some nicer edges as it runs around this shape. So if we grab our rectangle and put it here in the hierarchy, that should work. And it has, however, it's not going the full way around because we still need to connect all of these clones together. So to make each one of these clones one single spiral, we'll come up here to this menu and grab a connect. And the same deal with that one, we need to hold Alt so it's applied. And we're now getting that sweep all along our spline, but we're getting a bit of an issue here. Let's take a look at our sweep and see what's causing this. Now, if we look down here, we could probably start by taking off the banking. And now we've got a nice flat surface going on, but we still have these little slits in our mesh. And we can probably fix that. If we dig down to that helix, our angle is set to 360 degrees, which is a full loop. But if you're having this problem, you can probably fix it by just upping this by one degree. And that seems to have fixed it. And now we've got our two meter long curly springy spline. So let's get some controllers in here and rig this up. Let's switch back to our front view and we need to bring in a null. So up here and we'll grab that guy. It's a bit hard to see and we could have done this in the last lesson as well, but we can change the display of these nulls. If we click here, you can see we've got plenty of options. Circle's always a good one, but let's be a bit more adventurous and we'll grab a star. Now that's nice and easy to see. So with him selected, we'll hold control and drag up a duplicate. And if you want to be really precise with this, we could undo and come over here and enable snap again. And we also need work plane snap and grid point snap. Now we can snap to these grid points. We'll put one right in the middle there when it says grid point snap and we'll hold control and drag one to the top as well. So now we've got these three nulls, the bottom, middle, and top. We well, don't need snapping anymore, so let's turn that off. And we'll also switch back to our perspective view. And we need to link these up to control our springy spline. And we'll do it a little bit different this time. Let's select all three of these guys. And we'll come up to MoGraph. And this time we'll use a tracer. Okay, let's hide our sweep for now so we can see what's happening here. We can use our tracer to draw a line or a spline between these three and use that to drive all of these. So let's click on our tracer. And because we had these nulls selected when we brought that in, it's automatically put them in here in the trace link. And you can see the third one in there if we scroll this down. The mode is currently set to trace paths, which isn't going to do much as none of these have moving paths. So let's change this to connect all objects. And now if we zoom in, you can see this line between all of our nulls. And if we were to move one of these, the line will come along with it. And we have a slightly different setup to what we had before. But like before, if we come to our tracer, we'll have some familiar settings down here. We can change the interpolation of our spline. Let's grab a keyma again. And the intermediate points will set to subdivided. And if we try that again, that's looking a lot smoother. So how do we get this rig to drive this stuff? Again, we can do something a bit different here. This time we'll use a spline wrap. And that's a deformer, so we can find him up here. There's the spline wrap. And so far it's come in as a big yellow box here, but it should correct itself once we've given it a spline to wrap to. But first we need to be pretty specific with where we put this in our hierarchy. So we'll collapse these guys up and grab our sweep. Then we'll hit Alt G on the keyboard to make it a group. And we wanna see this now, so let's unhide that. And for this to work properly, we need to put our spline wrap right here. And let's wrap that yellow box around there nicely. So that's a good sign. Now we just need the spline in here and we'll be using the tracer as our spline because it's drawing that line for us. 
So we'll put him in there. Now we've just got the wrong axis happening here. So let's switch this to positive Y. And now if we were to grab one of these nulls and move that, we've got our spring all rigged up nicely. However, moving these is a little bit slow with all that geometry in there. So I'd recommend just switching the connect off while you move it around and position things. And you can see as we move that around, everything's happening a lot faster. And we can move all of these nulls and get the same effect. And we can go back to the tracer and change the type. We'll give B spline a go. Just grab this null and we get a slightly different interpolation of that curve. Then when we're ready to render, we can switch the connect on and we get all of our geometry back. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. You could probably use this setup to animate a slinky. I'm sure you'll have plenty of fun with it. As usual, you can get both of these rigs in a handy project file, the link's down below, and there's a render ready version on our Patreon page. You can get loads more cool stuff on our website, so check that out. And if you haven't already, there's still time to enter this month's art challenge, where you can win Octane render subscriptions and prizes from Daz3D. There's a link to that below as well. That's it for today. I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below. Or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.